What's up guys, Cody with Rattlesnake Ranch, and right now I am in our hibernaculum. This is our fancy walk-in cooler, and this is how we hibernate slash brewmate our rattlesnakes. Today's video is going to be all about that. Hope it's interesting to you. You get to see a lot of snakes in this video, so enjoy watching. All right guys, so we're gonna kind of answer three of our most common questions um, with this video. So we're gonna talk about what brumation is without going into too much detail. Uh, we're gonna talk about this space and how we accomplish that in a captive setting. And we're going to talk about why we do it. And so I know you don't wanna see my face blabbing on constantly. We had a lot of snakes. I mean, there's a bunch behind me right now, as you can see, but this is only a small section. Um, so I'm going to put a bunch of B-roll of us putting each snake into their tubs. Uh, we've spent the last two days doing that. And uh, yeah, just so make sure you guys get to see a lot of different species of rattlesnake in this video. Uh, we obviously don't hibernate every single rattlesnake. We've got lots of tropical ones that do not do this in nature. And this would probably kill them, so we don't do that to them. But everything essentially north of Mexico, and even some in Mexico, um, we place in here. And uh, yeah, they ride the winter out for about three months. It stays about 50 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit in this building uh, with the help of some cool technology that I'll talk about here in a second. But uh, all to say, enjoy seeing all these snakes and hopefully you can bear with me and all my jabbing. So uh, first question, why do we do this? Well, short answer, they deal with it in nature. And so because they deal with it in nature, we want to mimic that in captivity. They are adapted to the seasons. And I would argue that not only is it good to do because they deal with it in nature, I think it has lots of other benefits. So you don't actually have to brumate or hibernate a rattlesnake. They'll be happy in a warm tank year round. But we've noticed it seems to increase their ability to reproduce properly. I would argue, and this is just anecdotal, but I would argue that it keeps their immune system robust and likely because of that, we argue that it would um, increase the snake's longevity. And essentially this is a nice sleep slash pause for the snake and their metabolism. And so I think it's beneficial, but let me know in the comments if you think otherwise. But uh, yeah, they deal with it in nature. And so just like in nature, we wanna try and mimic um, what they're hibernating in. And so we call this building the hibernaculum because that is exactly what it's called where organisms overwinter, the spot that they choose. And so for a snake, especially a rattlesnake, you know, it might be a deep fissure or crevice between rocks that escapes the extreme temperatures, you know, the frost line, things like that, you know, a deep hole under a shed, I mean, depending on where they're at in the country, you know, they can be more or less picky on the sites that they choose. You know, here in Arizona, we have such mild winters, which is partly why we built this space. It does not get cold enough for us to hibernate some of our Pennsylvania timber rattlesnake, for instance. Um, it gets a lot colder there than it does in the Phoenix area. And so for snakes like that, we wanna be able to cool this properly. This space, we have an air conditioning unit. It's actually just a regular LG window unit, but its thermostat has been overridden by a device called a CoolBot. And so this device actually tricks the AC into thinking the room is warmer than it actually is, and it keeps it running longer. And so what you can actually do is set the temperature. I mean, you can go as low as high 30s, and this device will get it there as long as it's a you know well-insulated space and using the appropriate size unit. So yeah, with the help of the CoolBot and this AC unit, doesn't matter if we're having a 80 degree day in February or a 48 degree day in February, uh, this thing will hold it where I set it, which is awesome. Now we typically keep it between 50 and 55 degrees Fahrenheit, but uh, just like in nature with cold fronts moving in and things warming up again afterwards, um, we'll let it bounce around a little bit, but we do have the ability to keep things to within a degree or two, um, which is pretty awesome. So shout out to CoolBot. I'll put a link in the description below. If you're interested in looking at one of those units, they're great for a room like this. Um, people buy these for, you know, 
you know, backyard butcher space, um, florists will use them. So yeah, cool device that uh, has helped us accomplish having our hibernaculum. This is a 120 square foot building, uh, very thickly insulated with spray foam insulation. And uh, right now it's dead quiet in here and that's because I'm talking, but um, everything will be running in just a little bit. At the end of the video, you'll see it actually running. So I have the AC off, the fan off. There is a fan behind me here on the wall, a little six inch fan that comes on uh, randomly throughout the night. And that is to uh, just circulate some of the air. And so that'll, that'll uh, yeah, create some good airflow. So between those two things, that's kind of how we keep the temperature and airflow optimal. We've also got a little five gallon bucket with an aquarium bubbler going. That's just to kind of keep humidity up in here. We get bone dry conditions in Arizona. And so even just a bucket of water in here can help raise it up, you know, a few um, percentages, degrees. Um, anyway, and of course the snakes themselves, uh, they're in rack systems. You guys are probably aware we're not huge fans of keeping snakes in racks, but I think for babies and for this process with hibernation, brumation, those are interchangeable, by the way, you're gonna hear me use them both. Um, with this process, um, I think it's great to do it this way. We can monitor each snake individually. They have a hide, they have a clean water bowl available to them. They do drink during br brumation. Um, we've witnessed it many times. And also those water bowls kind of help keep humidity within the tub itself up a little higher. And so, yeah, they're all in there with that. They got naturalistic bedding and they've got everything they need. We don't feed them during this process. They can't properly um, digest food. And so, um, yeah, they won't be getting fed. So it's kind of a bittersweet time of year for me because I have to do less work when it comes to feeding. Same for Logan. Um, yeah, they're just pretty much in here riding out the winter, resting, and that's it. As you can see by the footage, we're just dropping snakes into these tubs and uh, kind of letting them settle. We'll check them in a day or two uh, just to make sure that they have settled, that they didn't decide to poop. Now we've actually been fasting all these snakes, you know, all of November pretty much. So they've had a whole month to digest food and defecate and all that. But inevitably there's gonna be a few that just have been holding it and they decide to go in the tub. So before we really call it quits in here, we're gonna just check them over one or two times over the next day or two. And then uh, once things are good to go, and you'll see at the end of this video, we're gonna activate the cool bot, the AC unit, get the fan going. I'm gonna cover all these racks with a black sheet. Um, it's basically just to uh, kind of keep some of the draft off of the AC unit. Um, it's gonna be blowing constantly. But then on top of that, you know, every time we're coming in and out of here, you know, it's going from nice and dark to all of a sudden bright light with the sun coming in um, through the door. So uh, this is just a kind of way to just keep them a little a little more hidden, a little darker. Uh, again, we're shooting for dark, slightly damp, slightly humid, and, uh, and cold conditions. And so that's what they need. So I'll throw that sheet over. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Out of the hundreds we do year after year, um, they get through it just fine. They're perky in the spring after they warm up for a few days in their, uh, you know, back in their exhibits. I don't know how well my mic's picking it up, but I got a rattlesnake over here that's offended that I'm still talking. But uh, anyway, one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, so one thing that's really cool about rattlesnakes, it's pretty unique actually, is uh, they're fair, they're a lot more social than we have ever thought. Um, there's just more and more research just pumping out left and right that uh, provides evidence of this. But one undeniable thing is a lot of species choose to overwinter together. And so you'll find hibernacula in nature loaded with rattlesnakes, especially species like timber rattlesnakes, prairie rattlesnakes, you know, colder climates with maybe slim pickings when it comes to, you know, ideal den sites, all the snakes will choose to overwinter in one den. And so um, the reason I bring that up is uh, a really cool project that's pertinent to, to all of the things we do and our ranch and all that is uh, called Project Rattle Cam. If you haven't heard of it, definitely check it out. They have a YouTube channel, and essentially what this is, is a live stream camera that is right on a prairie rattlesnake mega den on private property in Colorado. And so you can check out their YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description below. And guys, you can see piles of prairie rattlesnakes uh, doing their thing, uh, interacting with one another, interacting with predators, um, and you know, harvesting rain, just doing all sorts of cool stuff. 
And uh, obviously that's, you know, this is more of a spring activity and fall as well. But what's cool about this spot is it's not just a winter den site. The gravid females stay at this den site and they treat it as a rookery. And so they're also giving birth at this site. So again, spring to fall, you can see some sort of activity. Uh, such a cool thing. So um, I just thought I'd plug it. We're a huge fan of the project here at Rattlesnake Ranch. We've actually been uh, fairly involved in um, helping them expand it. And uh, one thing we haven't done, but I'm going to make a whole video about it. We're going to put a screen up in our zoo that shows this live stream um, footage. Just we'll have it running 24-7, except for in the you know dead of winter. But anyway, just wanted to mention Project Rattle Cam. Follow their Instagram and you know, Facebook, all their social media. Check out their YouTube channel. Even though it's winter, they're still posting stuff. You know, they'll post highlights from the previous season. And a uh, really cool project. Alrighty, hope you guys enjoyed watching. Um, again, bittersweet time of year. Uh, for the next about three months, about 50% of our collection is in this building, just chilling, literally. And so, uh, yeah, the content, you know, our videos will kind of change a little bit. We have some fun ideas to get us through the winter, but uh, yeah, if you, again, if you've been thinking about visiting, maybe hold out till spring, but uh, if you do end up doing a private tour, you will get to see inside this space. But uh, thank you guys so much for your support, all the new subscribers, welcome. Hope you guys enjoy what you've been seeing. Um, new video every week. I think next week video is gonna be a cool one, so. Stick around. See you next Friday. Later. Mm -hmm.